get ready to see how I got the look for less using an Ikea hack with this Ivar cabinet. And as always, DIY treats. Welcome to my channel, Craft, Eat, Repeat. Hi guys, it's Aneka, and welcome to my channel, Craft, Eat, Repeat. So today's video is a little bit different. I usually do Dollar Tree DIYs, smaller type decor things, but today I have an Ikea hack and I'm so excited to show this to you guys. It adds the perfect touch of personality to my space and I needed more storage. As some of you guys know, I recently moved into a new home and it's beautiful and I love it, but the one thing that I need is more storage. So this Ikea hack helped me to add some storage to my space as well as a little bit of my style and personality and I absolutely love the way it came out and I love the price tag. <laughs> I love that I was able to do it on a budget so I really hope you guys enjoy it. If you're new here, welcome. Thank you so much for stopping by. If you like what you see, please hit that subscribe button everyone hit that notification bell so you'll be ready when my next video comes out and at the end of the video head down to the comments and let me know what you think what type of ikea hacks do you want to see in the future any of those things or you could just say hi i always love to hear from you guys all right guys it's time to craft so as I was surfing Pinterest, probably in the middle of the night when I should have been asleep, I came across this gorgeous cabinet and I just really wanted something like it, but not for $630. So I went to Ikea and I bought the Ivar cabinet and this was only $90 and I thought I could get the look for less getting that beautiful pattern in the middle of the cabinet, but also making it more of my own into a little more of that modern boho vibe. I knew that I would be able to get more storage this way and also just put a little more of my personality in my living area. So I thought this would be a great project. I started by staining all the wood in the Ivar cabinet. I used this dark walnut colored stain and polyurethane combined. Now I will say that this made the process go a lot more quickly to use this combined stain and polyurethane. However, I do think I like the look better when you stain separately and then seal it. So in the future I will do that, but if you're in a pinch for time, this does the trick. After the stain was completely dry, I went ahead and put the cabinet together per the instructions in the manual, which is the fun part of any IKEA project, and I stopped just short of putting the doors onto the cabinet. So one way that I thought I could add a little more personality to this piece was to add some hairpin legs. I think the cabinet is adorable on its own. I think the pattern would have stood on its own, but adding these legs really just added a little touch of style. It actually helped to raise it up to the perfect height for the space. And I just think that it looks a little more high end with just the addition of some legs. So I used some six inch hairpin legs that I got from Amazon. They were $20 for the set of four and I love the weight of them. I think they look perfect for this project. I'll be sure to link them down in the description box below. I also already had some of these thumbtacks. I got these from Dollar Tree and I had multiple packages that I needed to use up, but guys, <laughs> As you will see, this was way more work than it needed to be and you should just buy white thumbtacks instead of spray painting them, which is what I did trying to use up some of the supplies that I already had. I put them in the this cardboard box so that they would stand upright so that I could spray paint them along with the legs. And I just used a glossy white to do this for the legs and the thumbtacks. 
Next, I went ahead and I put the legs onto my Ivar cabinet. Now, the screws that come with these legs are a tad bit long, which I did not realize until I had already been drilling them in. So if you're going to do this project at home and you're going to buy the same legs that I did, go ahead and get some shorter screws so that they do not go all the way through your cabinet. I made sure to anchor two of the screws onto that side piece so that they could go all the way in. And the rest I did just leave out about an eighth of an inch so that they wouldn't be poking through the cabinet. Make sure you drill some pilot holes just to make sure that you don't split your wood. And then you can easily screw the legs right into your cabinet. and I repeated the process with all four legs. Next, I created a document with the circular pattern that I wanted to put on my cabinet. I'll be sure and link that down in the description box so that you can use the one that I use, as well as a video showing how to print it out over a three by three grid. This will make it the perfect size to fit onto your Ivar cabinet. Now, if you're using a different cabinet, which you totally could for this project, you could really use any cabinet that has a flat surface, you might wanna adjust the size of this template to fit the piece that you're using. So once I've taped the entire thing together, I'm going to flip it over and I'm gonna color the entire thing with some pencil. Now what I'm gonna do is to do a pencil transfer onto my cabinet just to give me a little guidance on where to put my thumbtacks once I put them into the piece. So every part of the circle needs to be covered with a nice layer of graphite to make your transfer easy enough for you to see in the next step. Now that my template's ready, I'm gonna take my front doors, which I did not attach to the cabinet, and I'm gonna lay them side by side, just as they would be if they were hanging on the cabinet, making sure to line them up exactly evenly so that your pattern comes out the way you want to, lined up beautifully. Now I'm just going to put the circle right in the middle, and I did use a tape measure just to make sure that I got it nice and centered with an equal amount of distance on each side, top and bottom, as well as side to side. And once it's placed exactly where you want it, make sure to use a little painter's tape to keep it in place. Now I'm going to take a pen or a pencil, whatever you have on hand, and I'm just going to trace over the lines. And this is going to transfer the pencil that I colored onto the back of my stencil right onto the front of my cabinet. Now for these center circles, they were nice and small, so I just traced right over them. For these larger circles, I wanted to make sure that I had a nice even line. So I traced one edge of each of those circles because it was easier for me to keep my hand steady and make sure that I wasn't waving all over the place inside of that margin, if that makes sense. But you want to make sure that you have a really even line because you're gonna be putting your thumbtacks right on that line. And as you can see, that transferred <laughs> some pencil right on until my kids decided to start dancing on my project. <laughs> which, you know, it's nice to have little helpers most of the time. <laughs> Next, I'm just gonna take my thumbtacks and I'm just gonna follow along on the line that I just drew. So I'm just putting the sharp part of the tack right into the middle of that line, which is why it's so important for you to get a nice, straight and even line. I did decide to go ahead and use another tack as a spacer. It's okay if it's not exactly perfect, but this just gave me an idea of how far apart to put them. Even if it wasn't exact, I think it made it look nice and neat. 
Now, some of these push pins went in very easily and some of them gave me a lot of trouble. So I do not have a rubber mallet. So what I did to make sure that they went on there nicely and flat was that I used a hammer and I just covered it with a cloth to make sure I didn't take all the paint off of the thumbtacks that I just painted. So just take your time, make sure you have extra tacks because I did ruin a few in the process and just make sure you have enough time. This took me about three hours to do all the tacks all together. So it was definitely a bit tedious, well worth the effort, but just make sure you budget enough time for it. So the next thing I'm gonna do is put my stencil back onto the front of my cabinets and I just wanted to line it up so that the inner circle was the only circle that was a complete circle, if that makes sense. So I lined up the top of that very smallest circle with the outside ring of the tacks that were already there. And then I just traced the entire pattern on again, stopping right where the tacks were because I knew I wasn't gonna put any in the middle of my original circle. And I transferred my pencil on once again and then continued on with placing my tacks, using my hammer as needed, and just making sure that it was all nice and lined up. Now guys, originally I thought about using glue for this part of the project, but when I put the first one in, I actually wanted to move it and I could not get it out for the life of me. So I did not use an adhesive, but if you want to, you can do that as an extra step to make sure that it stays nice and secure. The other thing I wanted to mention is that if you put your tacks too close to the edge, they will come through in that inside handle piece. So be careful about that. But as you can see, they came out beautifully and I was ready to attach them to the front of my cabinet. Now by this time it was dark outside, but I was like, <laughs> I'm gonna finish this project tonight. So I went ahead and worked on it and I am so pleased with how it came out. I love the pattern. I think the tacks look beautiful. They add a little dimension to it. Even though I could have painted the same pattern on there, I love the dimension that the tacks give it and I just couldn't be happier with this project. Wipe it down with a little damp cloth to get any graphite off that's on there, and you have a beautiful IKEA hack for about 120 bucks instead of 630. So what do you guys think? Head down to the comments and let me know. I can tell you that my favorite thing about this piece, besides it being Ikea hack, which is really fun, and besides it being gorgeous, I love the pattern. I love that I did this on a budget. The cabinet itself only cost me $90 at Ikea. The stain was about $8, and the hairpin legs were not that pricey either. I'll be sure to put them down in the description box below in case you would like to get some, but they definitely added the perfect touch to make this piece look so high end and I absolutely love the way it came out. I definitely got that look for less. So if you're new to my channel, you may not know, but I love to do a DIY treat at the end of every video. Well, most videos anyway. And today's treat is a little something with a taste of fall. Although I think it would taste delicious all year round. I love to call this Thanksgiving Munch Mix because it's the easiest thing to whip up on those busy holidays. It will take you five minutes to put together and people will just be grabbing and eating it all day because it's very delicious. <laughs> and who doesn't like delicious at the holidays? Or like whenever. <laughs> so it's time to eat. If you want a quick, easy, and munchable treat, here it is. You grab some Chex Mix, whatever kind you like. I love cinnamon, pretzel sticks, craisins, candy corn or candy pumpkins, and whatever flavor of M&Ms you like. You get a bowl and put it all together. I used about three cups of the Chex Mix, about a cup of the um, pretzels, and with the candy, I feel like this is one of those areas where you just do what you feel. <laughs> you just add it in until it looks about right to you. I like to go heavy on the chocolate. I also had some of these pumpkin spice 
M&Ms that I threw into the mix. You mix it all together, you put it out for your guests, and you will have a household full of very happy people. Just don't make it for yourself or you will end up eating the entire bowl, I promise. I hope you enjoyed the project and the treat today. Head down to the comments and let me know what you thought of this IKEA hack. Give this video a thumbs up, subscribe if you like what you see, and share it with your friends. And I'll see you next time when we repeat it all again.